thought I would answer a pretty common question that we get quite often, and that's how do I exclude bats from a, a crevice, behind gutters, behind a trim board? Uh, we, get, we get calls on this quite a bit, so I thought I'd take a little time, use some visual aids, and go through that with you. Now, the first thing that I have here is a few pictures from a local owner. Uh, I'll scan these and put them up for you, but uh, the first one is, how do you know if you have bats, if you're having an issue? Uh, this is fairly common. You see bat guano somewhere, and you're not sure what it is. You investigate, and you find out that above this bat guano, there are bats roosting. So the next question becomes, where are they roosting? Also, fairly common, this is a log home. You can see in the log home here that there are these openings, these gaps that occur here. And this is a prime roosting place for bats. They love to get on here. They've got plenty of foothold and they'll crawl up in any little crevice or anything that they can get to. They're gonna crawl up here and roost. That's what they do. Now, we got Benny here who's gonna try to be my helper today. Lay down. So I'll have to stop every now and then and keep him from misbehaving. Now, this is a different log home when it was originally built. Uh, this is how the problem was resolved. They have a mastic. It's actually a gummy material that you can cram in there. It's, it's like artificial mud. And you cram it in, and this prevents the bats from getting in in the first place. But this other log home did not have that done, and bats have gotten in. So the question becomes, what should we do about it? So what I've done is I've created a reproduction of a crevice that you might find on a home. Uh, we've got a gap here, three-quarter of an inch gap. They can get into gaps as small as a half inch or even smaller. And one of the most common ways to cover a gap like this would be to use a bird netting or a plastic hardware cloth to go across the top. You staple it. Let it hang down at least 18 to 24 inches. And what happens with that is when the bats come back, they land on it, they can't get in the crevice. But if there's any bats already in the inside, they can crawl down and leave so that they're not trapped. Another option to close this crevice up is if you still need the airflow. If you're in a situation where you need the airflow, like a vent, and you don't want to close it up, you can use a material similar to this. Uh, GAF makes one, I believe they call it Cobra. It's basically ridge vent uh, ventilation screen. And it looks like cheap air filters that you might find, but you don't want to use those because they're not UV resistant. The ridge gap uh, cover stuff is uh, UV resistant. And what you can do is it comes in various thicknesses. You'll, you'll cut it into strips, even though it's a little pricey, but it goes a long way if you're just closing up gaps like this. And you just shove it in to the gap. And you would cut this a little thinner so it could disappear in there, and you would shove it in just until it was flush and that will prevent the bats from getting back in because bats don't chew on things. They push, they pull, they shove, so you want a nice tight fit. You do want to cram it in there, but they're not gonna chew their way through it. Now, another option is to actually use uh, a spray foam of some type. You can use spray foam. You can even use the mastic that the uh, log cabin company used. Uh, you want to make sure you get either uh, a good window and door that doesn't expand much at all and doesn't have a lot of pressure or minimal expanding foam. If you use the triple expanding, uh, you can put that in there. If you get too much, it'll actually pry the uh, trim right off the house. So be careful in what you do get, but uh, a minimal expanding or a window and door uh, would be the best foam to get. And you can spray this up in here as well, uh, right at the entrance, let it expand, fill it. You can come back later and cut it and paint it. That works. Now, what if there are bats still in there when you're trying to do this type of an exclusion? Uh, you can exclude them with a toilet paper tube. Now, basically what you'll do is you'll take a, a toilet paper tube, a uh, paper towel roll, something like that, and you want to get some spray shellac or some type of exterior spray that you can spray the tube, kind of saturate it a little bit. Uh, that'll just make it a little more weather resistant so it lasts longer in the environment. Go to where you know the bats are coming in and out. 
And you're going to want to put this tube in like this. You want to try to fit it in and, and maximize the amount of gap at the top. Uh, and you're going to put this in. You may have to put a little tape on it to hold it till the foam is secure. And, or the, the stuff that you press in here if you're using like the, the vent material. And you'll press it in and you'll hold this and you want it to stick out a little bit from the structure. Uh, you, again, you can use tape to accomplish this, uh, any type of material put back here and tape it to it. And you're going to want that to stay on the house at least through one season. And what will happen is the bats will come along from behind, they'll find the tube and they'll exit out of that tube. But because of this design, they will not be able to get back in. Another option, uh, if you go with bird netting, um, and again, we're assuming that the opening is so that the bats can travel all the way back and forth behind here. If they can't, you would have to do this at every open opening potentially or make sure there are no bats in there. Uh, but usually they can travel along behind this and you'll put it into the areas where you, you know that they're coming in and out from where you see the guano on the ground. Um, so you can use those tubes or you can just leave gaps in the foam and then use bird netting over that so that they can come out and fly away. Uh, but whatever you do, remember that the bats need a path to get out. You don't want to trap them in the house. Uh, you, you don't want to cause a situation where you're going to have a bad smell. The other thing you need to remember is beginning sometime in April through early August, late July, early August, you also don't want to do exclusions during those times either because they may have had pups in here already. So if it's in the middle of July, you need to wait for the exclusion. Uh, make sure the bats can still get in and out because you don't want the mother to leave and then come back and not be able to get in to feed their pups. Uh, that wouldn't be a good situation. So I hope that's answered your question, given you some ideas. If you've got any other questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to try to answer them for you.